I was walking through the implant department the other day and I saw a case and it's a case that we see fairly frequently and I guess you could say that while it d doesn't necessarily make a case for general dentists placing their own implants, it certainly makes a case for general dentists taking over one step after that and being in charge of the abutment selection and or placement. So this is a dentist who had the specialist that he refers to place the implant and that went fine, but then said specialist went ahead and placed a stock uh, abutment and this is not the stock abutment this of course is the analog but when you look at this abutment you'll notice a couple things and the first one is that the margins of this abutment are about four millimeters subgingival so this is going to be a really subgingival crown and as I turn this sideways you'll notice that the very most coronal portion of that stock abutment is just about one millimeter super gingival but even then, the super gingival portion, as you look at it, is still about one millimeter subgingival to the gingival level of the first molar. So we, we've really got something here that doesn't have a lot of support. And imagine the crown here, obviously the crown to root ratio or the crown to implant ratio. There's just going to be a ton, a metric ton of two structure, of crown structure here before we finally get down onto the abutment itself. And so this is really not going to be a very good situation. The stock abutments, this is a five millimeter tall stock abutment, and you'll see some seven millimeter tall stock abutments. Strauman makes one, so you could get an extra uh, two millimeters of height here, maybe at the most, but that's about it. They don't get much taller than that. But even let's say if somebody made, say, a 13 or a 15 millimeter uh, stock abutment, we've still got these margins that are four millimeter subgingival here, really just kind of buried along here. And so this is one of those times where um, a stock abutment is just not a, a great choice. Um, stock abutments like this tend to cost around $175. And um, the surgeon actually charged uh, the patient for this abutment. And so it's a, it's a way sometimes for specialists to be able to add a little onto the implant fee. They can charge the patient for placing the implant and then charge for the abutment as well. And then we get the case like this from the doctor um, who takes an abutment level impression and we get it and look at it and say, wow, doc, this is going to be really difficult to make a good crown from. We'd really like to do a custom uh, abutment here for it to be prosthetically successful. And in this case, fortunately, the doctor said okay and he was willing to go for it. Um, but now all of a sudden the doctor is going to be paying and charging the patient for uh, a custom abutment as well. And so now the patient's kind of getting charged twice for this and so this dentist is probably going to have to call the specialist and say, hey, look, you know, thanks, but no thanks. You, you put this stock abutment on, but it really can't be used. And you can tell this is a specialist who hasn't done a lot of restorative dentistry. I mean, you and I as GPs, if we put on the stock abutment, we look at this and go, um, that's probably not going to work, you know, for a crown. Would you ever prepare a crown like this and go, yeah, that's going to work. No problem. You know, if this were a tooth, would you ever think to yourself, this is going to work fine. We're not going to have an issue. No need for a buildup here. Um, that's going to work out just fine. Uh, no, that would never occur to you. But for the specialist, this was going to be okay. But we know that's not going to be okay. And so this general dentist um, took off that abutment, took an implant level impression for us, and took a pretty darn good impression. Used a, a full tray, a closed tray uh, impression. And I just was playing around with the uh, coping in there and actually popped through it. But it was a closed tray impression and it was a full arch impression in a plastic tray uh, and it came out fine and we had the opportunity to make, to switch this with the same implant to a custom abutment. This happens to be a Nobel Replace uh, wide platform implant. Again, a word on the stock abutments, you know, if they average around say 175 bucks for a stock abutment, I would say that we have to modify around 85 to 90 percent of the stock abutments that we see here in the laboratory and there's a 75 dollar cost uh, for that and so all of a sudden we're up to about 250 dollars on the cost for a stock abutment once we have to modify it and the two most common reasons um, we have to modify a stock abutment are we either have to reduce the occlusal height um, because there's not enough reduction 
or we have to uh, drop the margins subgingival on it because it's not going to be a very aesthetic solution. So all of a sudden we're up to $250 on a stock abutment that has to have adjustments made where when you look at um, a custom abutment, uh, our charge for that is $299. And so $250 for a stock abutment with modifications versus $299 for a custom abutment. And you can see that this really fits the bill. The margins are exactly where we want them to be, just slightly subgingival. You can see the occlusal reduction is now in the correct place. You know, we've got about a millimeter and a half of, of occlusal reduction where we need it to be. We've got a nice margin represented all the way around here. Uh, because of the fact it's a second molar, the doctor prescribed Bruxer. So let me put this Bruxer crown on here. And there's the Bruxer crown in place, uh, patient biting together. And so with the uh, custom abutment that we have in place now, we've got some nice dimensions on the crown itself, as opposed to when we had the stock abutment here, we were just gonna have a huge chunk of zirconia that was gonna be four millimeters subgingival with just this huge mass of restorative material um, sitting on top of that uh, with just this really short implant, a bad crown to root ratio. And you contrast that to what we're able to do with the custom abutment. And so the custom abutment really is the right choice here. Um, unfortunately, the patient may have had to pay for this particular uh, abutment twice because of the fact that the surgeon um, was, was billing out for that stock abutment uh, on his own. So I get the fact that most GPs don't want to place, um, probably want to place implants on their own, and that's fine. Certainly no, no judgment uh, on whether or not you necessarily have to be doing that. But when it comes to that second part, when it comes to who's going to make the decision uh, about the abutment and whether or not it's going to be a stock abutment or a custom abutment, that would seem like it really does fall in the realm of the restorative dentist, of the general practitioner, because you know it's pretty simple as a GP to look at this and look at this and decide which one's going to make the better basis for the crown. I mean, just pretend this is a tooth and that's a tooth. And I think most GP, GPs would look at this and go, there's no way that's going to work for a crown. And this has a very high chance of working for a crown. I mean, really, what GP would ever put that in and entertain the notion that that's going to work, knowing that there's a custom abutment um, that could look like that. And, and for a specialist to put that in and think a GP is going to be able to make that work. Um, yeah, I granted that's just one specialist, but still, it's very easy to come to the conclusion that really the restorative dentist, the GP, uh, should be the one uh, stepping in and making the decision as to what type of abutment should be used in an implant case such as this. And there is our implant. So again, it's placed at a nice level, but again, you can see how a stock abutment placed in there would just not get the job done and when the stock abutment was in there you know considering that most of these are just five millimeters tall you know not only do we end up with super subgingival margins but we ended up with coronal margins that barely cleared uh, the gingival tissue and then you contrast that with what we're able to do uh, with the custom abutment where we're able to bring those margins up to the, the fact up to the level where they're just slightly um, subgingival or equigingival in this case because it is a lower second molar we're not worried about aesthetics and we're able to get proper occlusal reduction and nice taper and just everything about it now looks like a good tooth preparation and it's clear that that's uh, the right way to go and in the patient's best interest and the dentist's best interest and the Brooks or Crown's best interest all at the same time so I want to encourage GPs who are doing this type of restorative dentistry Make sure you're the one who gets to make the call on what kind of abutment is going to be used in an implant restorative case such as this.